maybe just get Tom to rap. We'll get Tom to ask himself questions and then answer those questions. You know, He's probably got some cooler stuff than Why we Why are you so good? I'm just fucking awesome and like, everyone knows it. Like, people just come up to me and go like, fuck me, you're so awesome. <laughs> why, why did you start booking bands um, in China? Why, why did you start doing that? Um, I, was a bit, I was sort of unemployed and uh, my friend's band from Australia came here. Which band? My brother's, no, my friend's brother's band called Backyard Surgeons, punk band. So I started helping them on the tour and then uh, I ended up doing the whole tour for them and going on tour and then I just kept doing more tours after that. A lot of bands started contacting me and uh, had nothing else to do. So that's it. Is it, a, is it a thankless task or? No, just him. <laughs> <laughs> thankless. What do you mean thankless? People say thank you, so it's thankful in that way. I mean, is, is it, like, what do you, thanks, like, what do you get out, out of it? Like, is, is it more of a, you, get a lot of, you don't make a lot of money. Yeah, a lot of people saying thank, thank you. Right. So it's, that's pretty good, but you, you know, you can't buy vegetables with, with thank yous, unfortunately. Yeah, you not get a bit not of even here. Yeah. <laughs> that's, like, yeah. that's the fundamental story of DIY. Yeah, not much money, but uh, I have other jobs where I do nothing and they pay me. And this is a job where I do a lot and I make no money, so it all balances out, you know. How, how many bands total have you in total? Um, through years, about 15, let's say 40, 45 probably. Yeah. And what was your favourite tour? Um, oh, the favourite tour is not, not the ones that like, make the most money or the ones that have the best gigs but the band that I like the most. So, from Melbourne, the Smith Street Band. Yeah. The best band ever. And like one of the only bands that I've toured here, no offense to all you guys, <laughs> yeah. that like, are in my like top 20 bands my whole life. Yeah. I fucking love them. And they're getting better and better. So anyway, yeah, yeah. That's what most people say about the Smith Street Band. Yeah, they're, they're the not best, offended. Man. I'm just proud <laughs> to have met them, toured them. Yeah. Sick. Sick. Um, <laughs> What's the, the big difference, I guess, between um, playing shows in Melbourne and Australian cities and shows in China? What's the, the biggest hurdle for me? booking and playing shows? In oh, I think I think it's probably easy here because you don't have the uh, firstly you don't have the equipment problem, so um, you just rock up and the gear's there, which is a really great thing because uh, if you um, if you just bring your guitar, you can just plug in and play. And uh, the bars are all pretty open about shows, and they they're always keen to have bands come and play. The only thing it is about it, you just don't make that much money, and uh, you've got to try and get people to the gigs, try and sell some tickets. Hard to sell CDs, very hard. And uh, I don't know, probably it's just the same as in other countries. Do you think there's an advantage in that? I know with us, we play in New Zealand and Australia. tonight like there's no other rock club in Suzhou so pretty much any band that ever comes to this city plays in this bar so from a booking perspective like in most smaller cities you've only got one bar so if you know the bar already you just call them so you just send a text message and say I want this date send them a poster and they do the rest you try and do your bit so you're not really in the smaller cities you're not competing with other gigs with other bands in the bigger cities maybe there's two or three bars or three or four bars so on a weekend you might be competing with other shows but in the smaller cities yeah there's only one club so it makes it simple from a booking perspective you don't have to think about where you're going to book the band you've only got one choice so that's good do you, do you prefer like uh, Beijing, Shanghai, Guangzhou bigger cities or do you prefer like smaller ones because speaking yeah. from our perspective we've like the smaller ones so far we've only done four shows but they've been incredible yeah I think the band's like smaller clubs because um, especially the sort of DIY bands like you guys like punk bands you have high expectations about you know we usually play to like four or five hundred people so some bands have high expectations so you've got to make an effort in the big cities to get a lot of people yeah but smaller bands they're here on a holiday you just you want them to go to a small city where the the promoter of the show and the owner of the bar the managers really 
really keen. Yeah. yeah. And um, you know, he'll do do everything. He'll just like pick you up, buy you dinner, and give you drinks, <laughs> and um, organize girls for you. And, like, <laughs> yeah. What the fuck? And uh, all that good stuff. <laughs> So the small towns are pretty good, and uh, you know you want the authentic experience, and you should go to these little shit holes on the way, and uh, you know check it out, eh? Hey? It's pretty fun. And um, like in the like, 15 years you've been doing this, what's the biggest change or the big changes you've seen? Um, the biggest changes. Oh. Things get better and they get worse at the same time. Like, I, like I've said to you guys before, it's like at the very beginning I had some really good tours. That's when I had no experience. And now when I have a lot of experience, I still have some good tours and some really bad tours. So I haven't found a formula to like have a perfect tour or a really good tour. So like every time you have, you get more experience, you still realise that you're like still making the same mistakes. Um, I guess the government has sort of cracked down on some places, like in Shanghai, for example. It's really hard to book gigs. They don't want foreign bands. A lot of the bars won't accept foreign bands, which is bullshit. But um, there's nothing you can do about it. And um, there's more bars opening up, but there's more quantity, but there's not that much quality. Like It's really hard for them to survive. Like this place or any any bar, like, they're under a lot of pressure and um, they're paying rent. And uh, the bar can just be like knocked down any day of the week. Like, there's been a lot of examples of bars, like you call them and they're like, oh, we just got told we're going to get knocked down in um, three weeks. You know, a bulldozer will come and just knock down the bar and they have to find a new bar. So yeah, it's good, but uh, it's still pretty hard, yeah. And um, is there any, uh, in terms of the difference between booking shows overseas and like Australia, New Zealand and booking shows in China, does the, um, like the attitude of the, the government and the way they kind of approach things affect much of what you do? No, nah, not at all. Like, uh, yeah. Shanghai is the only example. <laughs> Shanghai is the only example of like um, where a lot of bands have to get a permit to play, which is like prohibitive. Like, means that if you have to pay for a permit, that you can't uh, you can't play a gig because nearly all the money you make you have to give back to them to pay for. Apart from that, every Nicole, city. Can you grab that beer and put it on my every head? Every bar in every city. <laughs> Cheers. Sort of. Um, I don't know, but I guess they operate in their own little world, hopefully away from the government. And um, they just do what they can. And, you know, they're not successful enough or big enough to ever draw the attention of people that are like trying to take their cut or like trying to, you know, knock them down. But, you know, they all operate in small bars, so sometimes like underground, sometimes so that. The government wants to clear the area to build something bigger, so they're a bit like, vulnerable when it comes to that. Apart from that, we don't have any interaction with yeah. so, official people. Is there any, um, I can't think of any more questions. <laughs> Is there any like last words? <laughs> um, I don't know, I guess like for bands that have never played in like, other countries, probably a good start to come and play here. Like. Uh, you, know, you can play 10 gigs in like 14 days. You can like refine your uh, live sound really, uh, really well in a really short space of time, which you might not be able to do in other countries. Yeah. And you've got a pretty open-minded audience, so like even if you're shit, they'll probably like think you're all right. And if you're really good, they'll think you're awesome. And like if you're pretty good, they're willing to dance and stuff. So like, you know, in the rest of the world, sometimes like people are a bit too sort of cynical that they won't really want to dance, even if they're really awesome. And uh, yeah, I guess you don't make much money, but it's pretty fun. So uh, pretty cheap to travel, good food, whatnot. So. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Awesome. Pretty nice. Well, um, thank you so much for, for tour organizing no this for us. Last thing, can you just do like a little like, hi, hi, I'm Tom. Hi, I'm Tom. And what you do? This town touring, best DIY touring company in China. The only company that's ever taken a band to Seoul to them. Yeah. Or another show nobody's ever heard of. <laughs> that's it. Cool. Thanks, man. <laughs>